Great, guys. Guys, if you're enjoying it, please let us know in the Slack channel. Let us know on Twitter as well. I wonder where Tamu is. Is there music going on? No, I was waiting ah. for you to introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Tamu. Because <laughs> I'm technically a speaker with our next uh, guest. We'll be in a fireside oh, chat. Yes, you do. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, the fireside chat with Winnie Yakoru, right? Yes, Winnie, oh. can you join us? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. So, so nice to meet you. So nice great to, to see you again. Um, well, and we're I'm very, like... yes, we're so excited to hear your story about Safaricom. Um, I know you kind of have a presentation. Do you want to kick off with that first? Yes, yes. I'll start by sharing the journey. I decided to, to choose something unique, not to have any presentation in terms of uh, a slide uh, or maybe a demo, but just to give an overview of uh, how the experience it has been for me and even the company. Okay, awesome. And yeah, I did prepare like a, a bracketed slide that I can share later if that helps to guide uh, the Q&A part. So I will uh, be in the background and I'll rejoin when you're done. Thanks. Okay, okay, so I can proceed. Okay, so hi, my name is Winnie Modani Gakuru from Nairobi, Kenya. I am a DevSecOps engineer too at Safaricom PLC. And today I'll be sharing my experience and journey using GitOps for continuous deliver delivery within Safaricom PLC. Uh, of course, while using OpenShift and AWS AKS clusters. I am a software engineer, bachelor holder, graduated a few years back with aspiration to further my studies in a few years to, to come. I have been privileged to work for various companies and most of them were startups. And I would like to mention one particular FinTech company that uh, actually exposed me to various market uh, demanding skill sets and other exposure. And that actually inspired me to kickstart my journey towards uh, DevOps. Safaricom PLC is the leading telecommunication company in Kenya and has already extended its roots across East African communities. And Safaricom PLC has a vast number of products and services that are heavily consumed by the targeted market. We have been in operation for more than 20 years now and recently just transitioned into a technology company, which is popularly known as a tech company. Well, flashback, while we were still a telecommunication company, we were big consumers of uh, third parties or vendor software services. But with the potential, the vision we had as a company, we began the journey to transition into a technology company and amongst other reasons, one was to also promote and utilize local talents like me. This technically meant that uh, we will have to do most of our software in-house as opposed to, uh, to paying for them. And culture like DevOps, agile adoption were among the pillars that could gear and drive the transition. Well, uh, whenever I mention or anyone mentioned the term DevOps, the first thing that usually storm in people's mind is usual pipelines. Well, we all know that it is DevOps, it's more than just pipelines. And like in my team that I work with, we have various thematics or sections. Uh, GitOps being one of them, and actually the reason why we are here. Uh, we also have things like security, we have tooling, licensing, just to mention but a few. Um, today being a GitOps uh, day, let me focus on GitOps within Safaricom and how we, we practice in it. So for you to practice GitOps or how we really approached it, uh, in this case with pipelines or continuous de uh, delivery, then you must know continuous integration and continuous deployment. Well, don't worry about the cool words. <laughs> uh, those are some of the cool words that uh, rose up while well, DevOps uh, was rose up also. So, but in a layman's language, CICD, as per their popular abbreviations, is basically how you automatically ship your code from your local machine to the intended server. It could be a UAT environment, staging, security, or even a production environment. So the basic 
workflow uh, in achieving this will be you just have a source code. Uh, in this case, it could be Git or maybe GitLab, GitHub, depending on the provider you will uh, choose. Then you need to have a CI tool. It could be Jenkins, it could be GitLab CI, it could be Travis. Again, depending with the tool of your choice to perform for you. For you. Uh, the third thing you will need, it will be a Kubernetes orchestrator. So we have various providers also, uh, OpenShift, Vanilla, EKS. For me today, uh, I'll focus on OpenShift and EKS. So it's worth mentioning that uh, us back at Safaricom, we give priority to open source projects within uh, the team. And the reasons for this actually extends to the benefits that uh, we get from using the open source projects. And when doing continuous integration, abbreviated CI, uh, either using GitLab or Jenkins, we must integrate security tools like uh, Veracode, Sonacube, just basically to do the SCA, DUST, and even SAST scans. We also have Ancha, or maybe Anka, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, that will assist actually to do even uh, image scanning, among other integrations that will integrate with our CI pipeline. So for us, sec uh, shifting security to the left by doing the tests and scans as early as at development stage is key. And this means we have enabled and even encouraged our developers to integrate these third party tools with their day-to-day -day IDEs. Well, of course, the main ID is VS Code. And then again, we want to achieve end-to-end -end automation. So integrating these tools with our pipelines helps us to achieve that goal. Well, without any assumption, let me mention that we do cloud native applications that runs in Kubernetes orchestrators. That means we use microservice, microservice principles and guidelines, which are popularly known as the 12-factor principles when doing software development well i hope now you can see the process and how they are actually related to each other well back to our goal of doing end-to-end -end automation there was need for us to practice or adopt gitops well gitops is just a way of uh, implementing deployment for cloud native application and it focuses uh, it focuses on a developer centric experience when operating infrastructure by using tools that are already familiar with the developers. These tools like Git and other continuous deployment tools. Uh, we can all appreciate that DevOps and, uh, has a variety of tools encapsulated to, to, towards it. Yeah, when we identified Flux, uh, which is an open source software to fill in the gap, and we started with Flux version one as most or almost everyone, uh, did, which quite gave us good service. And with Flux, this is generally what happens. You just follow their official documentation on uh, installation. You do the setup and bootstrap your cluster. Then Flux will deploy its operator. Uh, in the case of Flux version 2, it's known as GitHub Toolkit. So these GitHub Toolkits will work together and automate deployments for you. Just imagine, uh, just declaratively defining the state and requirement of your services, this, uh, which is also known as Kubernetes manifest, and commit it to a Git repo. And you don't have to worry how it will be deployed. So this actually improves governance because uh, you will be able to know when and who made a change and what change it was, which actually will make it even possible to do a rollback or maybe mitigate in case there was an issue. Uh, it also reduces the manual hours spent, maybe to deploy a particular service or maybe deployment. Uh, Flux leverages on Kubernetes API, and it makes it easier for you to enforce things like uh, cluster policies, secret management, multi-tenants, and many other uh, things. Multi-tenancy setup was prudent for us since we have various teams with various with different requirements and policies. But also, we work with vendors who would like to manage their resources in an encapsulated manner. 
thus we required tenant uh, isolation i know there has been several hands-on demo on how to set up flats on various cluster but just in case you need any guidance i will also be happy to to help well as a devops team um the company we are happy to say that flux has played a very important role uh, for us towards achieving end-to-end -to -end automation and these goals and tools helps our engineers to focus on key areas within their crafts and on innovation um thrill and pr proud to mention one of our products that usually attracts a lot of uh, innovation from our engineers this product, uh, known as M-Pesa, uh, is a mobile money service that enables our customers to send money both locally and internationally. With the development of a mobile app for the product, it has made it uh, easy for innovations around it to be embedded on it. This has acceler uh, accelerated. This was accelerated through the automation and use of tools like uh, like Flux. So automation allows new features to be tested, deployed, and even delivered to the customer faster and frequently. So this gives us a competitive advantage of our competitors. We want to, to scale, increase in terms of uh, velocity, release faster, but also release market-ready product. As we usually do these uh, automations and setups, it's usually important for us not to break anything in the process. Rather, we make the process more efficient and thus reducing the number of incidences within the IT department. Well, without digressing much, practice, practicing GitOps with uh, using Flux has been a very interesting journey for me and my fellow teammates. And with the introduction of Flux version 2, which we are currently uh, uh, and par parallelly piloting, we see the potential of scaling up. Uh, there's security and policy enforcement, there's uh, clear observability and even monitoring, among its other benefits that we have already observed. So Flux's ability of integrating with third-party open source tools like uh, Kivano, Mozilla Solves, and KubeConform helps us to set up secured pipelines that are not easily broken. So I am grateful and must appreciate the effort by the WaveSwork team on ensuring automatic cluster synchronization using Flux was possible. I would like also to appreciate WaveSwork again uh, with the partnership with Terraform Hashcorp, having a Flux provider for Terraform is a game changer for enterprises like Safaricom PLC. Uh, that that does a lot of repetitive tasks. So this means you can now fully practice. Uh, we can now fully practice GitOps on both pipelines and even uh, through ISC, that is infrastructure as code. So this works well for us towards achieving tool standardization since we are already using Terraform for our infrastructure provisioning. Well, of course, there are usually challenges encountered in every journey, but uh, be it complex documentation, poor infrastructure, lack of capital, language barrier. Yeah, um, I'm laughing because most of the above mentioned points were generic reasons as to why our ancient forefather could not do most of the industrialization. Well, it's hilarious, but it's very sad at the same time. Well, one of the challenge I faced uh, was at first the concept of GitOps was not as easy as Stefan and my boss usually portray, uh, portrays it. It gets more complicated when you are explaining it to someone who is hearing it for the first time. There are so many underlying concepts that are necessary and act as building blocks uh, for GitOps. But well, uh, frequent practices, uh, practice and trainings make it easier with, with time. And after several demos, trainings, I'm improving on how to simplify my demos and trainings that can be easily understood. Well, even to a two-year-old person. Secondly, people usually believe by seeing. My first encounter with Flux was purely through command line, popularly known as uh, CLI. 
Yeah, yes, uh, you must be familiar working with the CLI tools and basic understanding of uh, Linux commands. But if you but if you have been practicing Kubernetes and using kubectl commands, nothing much changes. So, but if you're a strong believer of uh, believing by seeing, well, Wivox also has a Flux UI version for that. But for us, we, we have maintained on the CLI version. Well, uh, I may not give the actual statistics or numbers in terms of the software releases within the company, but I can mention that uh, since we adopted the automation uh, automated deployment or the end-to-end -end automation, our numbers in terms of the releases has been uh, up. The graph has been uh, growing up with time. And also the number of incidences has reduced and uh, really appreciate the effort uh, that Flux is really playing uh, within the organization and on a personal level. So I would like to stop there because clearly I can go on and on speaking on the GitOps journey, but for the sake of time and reaction for the audience, I'll stop here and allow reaction and question from the audience. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and thanks for joining us for sort of this hybrid uh, talk and fireside chat. So um, I will share my slide um, just as a guide for us to chat a little bit. Um, and I, um, I will repeat a little bit because your talk was just so rich with so many things. I kind of just want to go in and highlight. And it really highlighted so many things that we've already been kind of talking with the other Flux users um, yesterday and today. Um, so again, I, I really appreciate um, your willingness and your company's willingness to, to share um, what a unique transformation that you talked about, um, about Safaricom, right? And how um, technologically interesting it is that, you know, you're shifting from, as you shared, sort of more of a mobile company to a technology company and how serious your team is about um, um, taking on these technologies and really moving forward. So it's, it's such a great, great use case. And I um, will be also monitoring questions because um, I'm sure people really appreciate sort of the concrete way in which you were um, talking about it. Um, so I do have uh, one basic question because we were we chatted a couple weeks ago um, and uh, the topic came up with the earlier uh, teams uh, or the earlier speakers is that, um, uh, you know, the team names, right? The team names might change or mutate because it's very modern, right? It's very evolving. Um, you know, people are saying, well, is it a platform team? Is it a delivery team? Is it, you know, and I think with you, I'll be honest, I got a little bit confused because you talked about DevOps teams and DevSecOps teams, and maybe there was some evolution and there's like one is inside the other or side by side, um, and, and it may change, right? So I was curious again, you say DevSecOps, but could you uh, clarify again, like how do the, who's servicing whom for what and how do things work together? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, these are, are <clears throat> among the cool names that come every day. But the key and un underlying thing is uh, the KPI. Like, what what's the goal that the team wants to achieve? So, if I want to identify myself as DevOps or platform or whichever the cool name I want to identify myself with, the key thing uh, at the end: uh, Are we really serving the goal? And one of the goal within uh, DevOps or DevSecOps, of course, there's that aspect of security, which has proven to be very costly for most of the companies, if well ignored. Uh, but uh, on top of it, we we want to automate. I can say the other key thing is doing that automation, remove the aspect of manual deployments, manual. Uh, setup of servers and all that so in my team uh, we started as uh, identifying ourselves as devops but then we we thought uh, security is very key for us let's uh, identify ourselves as devsecops i see yeah that makes sense um and uh you know as you talked about and i say priority one two and three but i'm you know, kind of listing here uh, i'm sure maybe from week to week the priority might change obviously security is a top one um, so I really loved how you you shared, um, first of all, um, in, in the case of Flux, right? You said leveraging the Kubernetes API, um, which 
I think it will be dear to many of the maintainers because they have made that commitment um, and to have you then reaffirm, right, that that not only um, helped with, you know, having the cluster policies, secret policies and all that, but um, also being connected to the multi-tenancy that's so important to your business, right? It's, it's great to hear that, as you were sharing, you have a very concrete request from your vendors that they need multi-tenancy, so it's... Mm -hmm. It's great that uh, Flux can do that, uh, and that, and to see how you're using it. Um, so I was also taking some notes. Um, it was really exciting. Um, you, you're talking about your app that um, uh, is built for sending money, and how leveraging the GitOps practices has really helped you to be competitive, um, primarily in the area of velocity. And um, I was wondering if you could share a little bit more, like. Um, you know, how were things before, um, how much more they improved, and then what are your thoughts, like what's, what's in process to continue to improve velocity, and as you share, it's a crucial part of your being able to um, be competitive, to release faster. Yes, yes. Um, so I hope uh, I'll, I'll operate within my allowed uh, jurisdiction. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, yeah, don't, no, yeah, don't share anything uh, a private. Uh, uh, <laughs> And confidential, of course. Yes. Yeah, so we have this one product, we call it uh, M Pesa, um, M for mobile money, and Pesa actually is a Swahili word for Pesa. So that is one of uh, uh, a product that uh, Safaricom is usually proud of that uh, we currently have. So before, before actually we shifted to DevOps and even the Agile, uh, and, and automation thing, things uh, were more of manual. So before a change, and you can imagine before a change could be done, there's a lot of manual and there's that aspect of time wastage. And uh, with such a uh, setup, it always discourage innovation. So one of the things that uh, when we compare then and now, it's in terms of actually the key thing is in terms of innovation, the end goal or the end benefit it has been on the innovation. So currently uh developers are being are given that exposure and they can now be able to come up with ideas and within weeks or even months that idea can can be live and of course with the automation and security in place and everything in place we are sure whatever we are delivering it's uh of standard and it's bringing value to the to the community so uh, in terms of velocity you you realize the uh, Again, manual wastes a lot of time. So when it's automated, you deploy faster and frequently. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and it was really great. I think, I think we met because you were uh, um, actively in our Slack channel asking questions about Flux. And we've been reaching out to community members. And um, you know, it was really great to see people like you very actively and hopefully getting all the help that you need. And, and I really appreciate your taking the time to share your story. So it was so great meeting you. I hope we'll chat again. Uh, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you also. Thanks for great joining to us. Be here. Yes. Thanks for joining us a bit late as well.